Welcome back. In the previous step, we looked at the clear method and also we looked at the detach method. In this step, we would take a quick look at the refresh method which is present in the entity manager. So, in the previous example, what we did is we created courses, flushed and we did clear. So, what happens here is entity manager dot clear. So, it clears all the things that it manages. So, it's not managing anything at this point. So, whatever changes you make, they are not reflected in the database. Now, let's set up for the next example for the refresh. Let's remove the entity manager dot clear method call in here. And we have a flush here, so I don't really need a flush in here. So we basically have the inserts here and the updates which are going on here. So one of the things I would want to do now after doing the updates let's say these are done in different methods these are not really done here so after doing the update let's say i would want to refresh course one with the details that are present in the database so course one i would want it to have the details that are as it is in the database i don't want the updated data for course one to go through i would want to refresh course one with the contents from the database how do i do that the way i can do that using entity manager is by using entity manager dot refresh so what would happen is all the changes which are done to course one are lost and course one will be refreshed with the content that comes back from the database so the steps are like this right so you create the courses when i do a flush these are inserted to the database so th these two courses are inserted to the database i'm trying to make changes these are still managed by the entity manager so entity manager keeps track of them and here i'm saying entity manager dot refresh course one what happens the course one contents alone the contents of course one alone would be refreshed and we would get the data from the database let's see what would happen let's put a debug point in here i put a debug point in here let's kill the server and let's do a right click debug as Oops. I put a debug point in here. I don't need I would need to debug the demo application. So I'll say I right click debug as Java application. It's asking me if I would want to launch in debug perspective. I'll say yes. And I would want to go inside this method. So I'll say function F5 or you can say step into which is present over here. Oops, this is going in a little deeper than what I thought. So I'll, since we already have a breakpoint at the start of the course repository, I would say continue or step return is also fine. So now the execution is at course one. So now let's see what would happen. I will clear out the console so that I can follow what's happening in here. Let's make this a little bigger and let's follow this closely now. The shortcut for step over is F6. So I'll execute the new course Nothing will happen with the database. Now I'm persisting it. It's just calling for a sequence. So as soon as I persist, Entity Manager is calling for a sequence and setting the value into the course. So if you look at the course, you can see that the ID of the course is set. What's the ID of the course? One. That's the only thing which is set. The course is not still saved to the database. Assigns an ID for course one, function F6, function F6. Now assigns an ID for course two as well. So course two gets the ID. To two, I guess. So it should be two, I guess. Yep, this gets a value two. So now we are calling flush. What does flush do? Flush tries to save this data down to the database. So what would happen? So what did the flush do? The flush inserted the course in. So insert into course, it's saving the details down to the database. Web services in 100 steps. And insert into course, name, comma, ID, values. So AngularJS in 100 steps, that's inserted as well. So now, Two rows are inserted down into the database. Now, let's execute the next statement. Before that, I would remove everything from the console. Function F6. So, set name. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. And now, what is the data in course one? Course one data is web service in 100 steps updated. That's the name. But now, I'm trying to refresh course one. What would happen? Observe carefully. Function F6. So, you can see that a select query is fired on course one. So you can see that the ID which is sent is one, which is the ID of the course one. 
and the data for course one is refreshed and you'd see that it has a value web service in 100 steps and now I'm doing a flush but even though I'm doing a flush now what would happen is the course one has the content which is present in the database so this does not need to be saved at all because this is exactly matching what's in the database the thing which needs to be saved are the changes to course two so function f6 what is sent out update course set name is equal to something where id is equal to something which id the id which is sent in is two and the angular js course the second course is updated the script the name for that is updated and saved down to the database now i can press function f8 to complete the execution if you go to the h2 console now and see the data you would see that this change is lost so this change is not saved down to the database so if you look at the course one it would have the name as web service in 100 steps however the course two the name as angular js in 100 steps so in this step what we did is we tried to understand the refresh method in detail what we also did is looked at what's happening in the background for each of these steps i would recommend you to do a debug step with this to understand the whole thing much more i'll see you in the next step